audio video check uh, looking like a middle-aged TJ Detweiler from the Disney popular show Recess. Is this working? Did you watch that? That was great. That is what I want from a Formula One race. Stupid strategies, great results, drama, lead changes, defensing, former cheat teammates going at each other. It had everything. What's up everybody? Welcome back again to the pit lane. Before we go any farther, if you could go ahead and do me a huge favor, hit that like button, drop a comment, hit the subscribe button. Everything helps out with the algorithm. Love doing this stuff. Love talking with the community. Thank you so much for your feedback so far and let's get into it. Hungarian Grand Prix 2021 at the Hungaro Ring. First thing, just some little pre-race drama. Uh, I heard them talking about uh, Yuki and his attitude in the race, obviously, or his racecraft or his actual demeanor on the radio and how they're getting tired of it. I talked about this in a few videos ago, but if it keeps on going, hello uh, Marco, the Grim Reaper for Red Bull, he might be pulling him away, just like, get out of here. And he might be a reserve driver for AlphaTauri, who knows? I mean, you could see somebody coming up in the ranks next year in Yuki's seat if they just keeps on having problems, especially with his mouth. Uh, we were hoping for a wet race, got a wet start. We'll talk about that in a second, but it dried up immediately. And then it was just electric from there. I think one of my favorite parts about the pre-race was they just had this sign that said, eat pasta, drive faster. And damn it, Esteban Ocon drove faster, getting the win. I mean, we'll get into the full race and everything and the drama, but it was everything that I love about Formula One. Just stupid mistakes, incredible moves, and just drama all around, like I said at the beginning. Uh, Red Bull had to change a power plant, apparently coming into this race and in Sergio's car, I believe. And then we just get a wet start. And what happens? Valtteri just plows in the back of Lando. Valtteri got a five-place grid penalty for the move that took place. I mean, I, I don't think that it was on purpose, obviously. He just was going for a dry line, breaking at the 100-meter mark, which everybody knows. Like, you need to give more space when you're on a wet track, but right into the back of Norris. Norris took out, uh, who did he take out? Norris took out Max, he took out Sergio, he took out himself, and then he had Stroll just doing, I don't know what the hell he was doing, just going up in the inside, taking out Leclerc, and then taking both of them out, and then everybody pit, and then Nikita, Nikita Mazepin gets taken out, when Kimi gets released unsafely from the pits, taking out his front tire. It was just a massacre. <laughs> That just led us to the red flag and just immense amount of holy shit moments. Like it was ridiculous. And then we had the race restart. Everybody's coming around. You hear Max on the radio. Like obviously Max's car was damaged, like incredibly damaged. And they somehow got the car drivable enough for him to go back out there. But they're going on the outlap and everybody's like, hey, this track might dry up and within them going a half, like a half lap around the actual track, the track was completely dry. So every single car came in besides Lewis Hamilton and it cost him the race. Like there's just quite an, it, it's gotta be a crazy picture with Lewis just sitting there on the line, every single other car getting dry tires put on, Lewis taking off, and then everybody coming out of the pit, Russell obviously trying to get up in front there. He was commanded to go back into P7 where he was when he went into the pits. It was kind of funny because he was technically at the front pit box, which allowed him to go out first. And everybody, everybody thought like, oh my gosh, George Russell's leading the race. But he was just trying to be an asshole. But I would have gone for the move too, see if I could get away with it. Why not? But Lewis having to come in the very next lap to put in dry tires, put him in last place. And it becomes a battle of the person who should win the race to get through everybody. And it was great. And when Lewis came back in, that gave us Esteban Ocon, Sebastian Vettel, and Carlos Sainz in the top three. Like, I could see Sainz being up there and Vettel got a P2 before, but Esteban in the lead 
and holding on to the lead the entire race. Obviously, Alonso had some of the greatest driving and blocking of Lewis Hamilton I've ever seen that help Esteban get that win. But we'll, we'll get into that in a second. But Esteban Ocon won a Grand Prix. He won. During the red flag session, obviously, you saw Red Bull just doing everything they could to put everything back on the car. Like, they can work miracles. I mean, they got the car good enough to be at least a mid-team car. They, they were outperforming the uh, the Haases still. They're outperforming the, Al the Alfa Romeos. So, ultimately, I think Red Bull did everything they could. Like, Red Bull gets team of the day. They got the fastest pit stop again, 1.8 seconds. Like, just when it really counts, I guess we'll get a quick pit stop. Way to go, Red Bull. When it doesn't count, you just get the quickest pit stop, like, of the season so far. Lando, obviously, so pissed. Leclerc, so pissed. Perez, so pissed. Also, they have to change the power plant in Perez's car again. So, like, with the caps on this year, it just makes it that, that much more difficult to keep the within the confines of the cost of what the regulations are this year. So could there be a possibility where a car just doesn't have enough money and they just can't race anymore? I don't know, but this year's bananas. So a few laps in, Lewis is in last place and it's a race from Lewis to get to last to first as quick as he can because A, it's Lewis Hamilton and B, Mercedes is just literally unstoppable. But it was so great just seeing him and Max fight like in P11 and 12 just to try to get some type of positioning. With about 30 laps to go, Nico was talking about how Mercedes is probably going to go to a two uh, pit stop strategy and they did and it almost worked. Nico with the big brain call outs there, but Lewis has, Lewis has a pace about him that is, it, it's understandable why he could be considered one of the greatest of all time. Obviously you kind of have like the Michael Jordan LeBron thing right now, but it's Mick, uh, Michael Schumacher, Lewis Hamilton, but like it's what he can show in that car against the other cars. It's literally unfair. Like, Alonzo being to hold him off the way he did is because Alonzo is a former world champion. Anybody else, not a chance. Lewis just shows something in that car. And I, I'm sorry if you think I'm being a Lewis fanboy, but it's unreal. The battle that we had between Lewis and Alonzo was some of the best, like, lap to lap racing that I have seen in a long time. Like Lewis trying the outside on turn one, the inside on turn one, trying to get him uh, coming into the next straight, you're in the DRS zone, going into turn two. It was absolutely electric. Fernando just being able to just plant his car in the middle of that track and it looked like a semi. Like he knew exactly where to put it. Lewis was gonna have to back out almost the entire time and they just start wheel banging a little bit. Like it, it was incredible. I've said it so many times, but it was some of the best racing I've ever seen. Go check out the Formula One YouTube channel right now and watch the race highlights. You will see exactly what I'm talking about. It is just electric the entire way through. Lewis was able to actually get up in the P3 after he got past Alonzo. Sainz just was not able to hold him off on those old hard tires. I think he had 36 laps on those tires and Lewis had 12, like 12 laps or so on his uh, medium tires. So he just didn't stand a chance, but Esteban able to hold on for the win. Vettel able to hold off Lewis. Lewis got within 0.8 seconds of, of Vettel there for a second. So Lewis could have possibly gotten P2 as well. Um, but Esteban for the win. Vettel in second. Lewis in third. So happy for Esteban. You deserve it. Vettel, P2. Congratulations. We had George Russell in the points for the first time for, for Williams Racing. Let's go. And then Latifi, he, Latifi came in eighth. So Williams basically just pulling themselves away from Alpha, Romeo, and Haas, giving them uh, more money going into next year. So good job for Williams. Let's see what they do on the 2022, but incredible stuff, guys. 
Also in the final lap, Gasly was able to take the fastest lap point away from Lewis, giving that to Gasly, which is great for Red Bull, obviously. Max was able to get up in the points there for a second, effectively taking two points away from Lewis's P3. Uh, now Lewis is, I believe, six points ahead of Max in the championship, and Mercedes is 10 points ahead of Red Bull in the championship. So things are really starting to heat up. Things are going to get dicey, and the next race we have is the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa. Spa is my favorite track. It looks really cool. I don't know if it's gonna be a good race because it's gonna really, really benefit the cars that are out in front in the clean air because they're such long straightaways, but it's gonna be awesome. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking us out again here at the Pit Lane. Again, if you could just go ahead, hit the like button. YouTube really seems to like the like buttons today. Drop a comment. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We will see you guys here soon. I'm going to try to be getting out some more content in regards to my opinions on drivers, driver lineups, where cards are going to be in 2022. Also, go ahead and check out our other channel, at Frame Drop Gaming. I'll go ahead and drop the link below. Again, thank you all so much for checking out the pit lane, and we will see you guys very soon.